For today's video, we will be talking about an SN2 reaction. For an SN2 reaction, this happens for the exception of an OH group on the structure, which is a bad leaving group. And for this, we would be using TSCL, toluene, sulfonyl chloride, and pyridine. So for this, if we had, let's say we have to have a structure like this. Let's say we have iodide, and to go from here to here, all we do is put NaOH, right? That makes sense. Take backside attack, and this will kick off, will give us a product. Now, if we had actually started with OH, and then we had to go backwards and go to iodide, we'd actually use TSCL, toluene sulfonyl chloride with pyridide, pyridine, and then also we would actually use other reagent NII. And this will make it in the reverse manner. This is because OH is a bad leaving group. This happens for an SN2 reaction. And so to make it a better leaving group, this will form something called OTS. And it is better to uh, for the leaving group to leave, which will do the mechanism. So if we start with this structure, Let's do the mechanism for this. We have OH right here, two lone pairs. First thing you want to do is bring on the TSCL. So let's react this with uh, TSCL paradide. So TSCL, toluene sulfonyl chloride will come first in this structure. It has a chlorine, sulfur, and then we have a hexane, cyclohexane shape. Um, we could put either something like this. Or we could just put a circle. I mean, it means the same thing. There's a methyl group on the other side. The sulfur has in two oxygens. And so this is the shape that it'll take. In this shape, we have the OH coming and going and attacking the sulfur. This will kick off the chlorine in this reaction. This will give us a reaction that will look like this. OH will look like this. Has one lone pair with a positive charge. Okay, so again, sorry. One lone pair with a positive charge. Now we have the structure connected to it. Double sulfur, the cyclohexane, and the two oxygens we still have. They both have two lone pairs. Now in this case for it, and we also have the chlorine as the byproduct, it's in the solution. For this to happen, actually we have the H over here. And now our second reagent comes in, the pyridide. So all this will take in a form of this. has one lone pair. This lone pair goes and grabs this hydrogen. This hydrogen gives off the electrons, the bond to the oxygen, which will give us a result of having the structure. Um, you don't have to redraw the structure like this. The whole thing, you could just put OTS, it's the same thing, but I'm gonna redraw the whole structure for this. So then now this is connected with this. It has two lone pairs. Cyclohexane. Now from here we use a uh, third reagent. Let's say in this case it was the, uh, let's put NABR. I should put NAI. Okay, in this case the iodide will come in. Negatively charged, so the sodium has a positive charge. The lone pair goes and attacks the carbon that is directly attached to this structure. Attacks this carbon from the backside and it will kick off this whole structure, the OTS. This will give us a product of iodide forming. In this case, this is the structure it can take. So this is the answer for this problem. Also, 
what happened to the other structure we had, it can actually do a resonance structure, three resonance structure if we have it right here. So resonance can take place because this has a negative charge. We can do is move this electron here and I move this back up here, which will give us a product of this. The resonance is not really that important if the professor does not ask for it. But you can do this on the side. And so now we can actually move it back here like this and have this over here which will give us a reaction of let's go over here. And so this is the resonance for doing this. But it's not important. This is this right here is the answer for the problem though. I was just showing you how it can do resonance also. But this is the answer right here. So let's do another example here. If we have this structure. And OH. Okay, and this was reacting with TSCL. Toluene sulfonyl chloride and pyridine, pyridine. Also, let's have it with KBr. So in this case, the first step is first. The toluene sulfonyl chloride comes first as a reagent, so it'll take on this its own structure. And a methyl group. So now the first thing is on here is that OH is a bad leaving group, and so this is an SN2 reaction. So let's make it a better leaving group. One pair of oxygen goes and attacks the sulfur. The sulfur between this bond gives this electrons to chlorine, which makes a formation of Take on the structure. This oxygen has one lone pair with a positive charge. Now from here, the pyridine comes in. Okay, this is not, not enough room, but I would draw it here. Has one lone pair. It comes and goes and grabs this hydrogen. This hydrogen gives off this electrons bond to this oxygen and so we would have a structure that would look like this again you can call it OTS and then you can just leave it actually before leaving but you can just call it OTS for short but if your professor makes you draw the whole thing then it's better to draw the whole structure out so we have this oxygen has two lone pairs connected to this ring Okay, now we have our third reagent come in, KBr. So potassium has a positive charge. Bromine has a negative charge because it is more electronegative. This bromine comes and it does a backside attack because this is an SN2 reaction and it kick off this whole structure, which will give us a final product that will look like this. on a dash because it's an S2 reaction and an inversion has happened. Again you can do the resonance for this whole structure over here. Resonance does happen if your first does ask for it, but this is the final answer for this problem.
conversion has happened. And this is an SM2 reaction. We have used TSDL, PY, and our KBR reagent.